Honestly, we so we started in Chile, and we were three Americans. No, they call us gringos down there, and um, you probably get that maybe on some trips to Mexico or or elsewhere. But um, honestly, it was probably our Spanish was the first barrier. Obviously, it was not not great. Chilean Spanish is is a, is a more challenging um, dialect. So it's a lot of slang terms, and and when you're uh, especially in amongst fishermen, they they're very you know very informal and casual, and they have their own way of doing things. So it took us a while to um, to really build those relationships and get their their trust and honestly belief in what we were claiming to do was in fact uh, for real us. When we finally came back with the first skateboard we made from the recycled fishing nets, it was a huge breakthrough that we weren't really even expecting with the fishermen. They actually took it as a big source of pride um, for them to show that not only they could do something good with this material that was once a, a waste and a harmful waste, um, but actually that, that this is something um, pretty cool. And their, their kids would appreciate it, and the whole community really got behind it. So that, that was a huge breakthrough for us. And now today, um, it's all about growing the program as fast and steadily and as responsibly as we can. So um, we're now operating across three countries, Chile, Argentina, and Peru. We're on track to increase to two more this year, uh, Uruguay and Ecuador. Um, and so we took it really seriously and we knew that um, if we were going to leave our day jobs, uh, we had to move quickly because it was going to be the three of us going without paychecks that whole time. So just whatever we had saved, we, we were living off of. So we went from, I got back on a plane to Chile in October of 2013 and I think we produced our first sample skateboards in February of 2014. So in a matter of just a few months, we, we went pretty quick from just a design, a prototype, to actually getting the mold and the first, um, first skateboards made. But that really is to credit of, of having an engineering background. We all have undergraduates in mechanical engineering, so we came in with with a pretty good head on our shoulders on knowing what it was going to take to really get this done. What was the light bulb moment that led you and your partners to like start creating products out of fishing nets? I was living in Australia, in Sydney, Australia, uh, on the northern beaches for about three and a half years. And I was working as an environmental consultant and I just happened to have a friend, well, not even a friend, a, a random guy move into a spare bedroom in my apartment that now is my partner in, in Boreo, David, who's a really avid surfer and was um, working in finance. And um, we ended up connecting with his good friend, Kevin, that was traveling around the world surfing with his brother and spent some time in the town we were living in Australia. And we had a few late night talks that just got us thinking, man, what if we could actually take these educations and skill sets that we've developed now and actually apply them to something more meaningful, something that we're passionate about, like the ocean environment. We just kind of left it there. And then I carried my career on to Chile as an environmental consultant. And I was just amazed by one, there's this really, really incredible coastline, um, still very, very much untouched. It, it, it's like California 60 years ago. Um, very, very still underdeveloped, but, but amazing coastline. And also a really big support system for entrepreneurs. There's, there's great, uh, great startup um, fund opportunities in Chile for anyone that wants to start a business. So I relayed that to David and Kevin, and we got thinking about doing something more meaningful. And at first, we, we said, let's do something about the ocean. And we connected on this problem of ocean plastic pollution. And we did a lot of um, kind of what you guys are doing right now. We did a lot of these things we called informational interviews, where we were just researching this problem and learned that there were some really tangible things that could you could take on with plastic pollution, being uh, three really common theme areas. One, education. People still don't really understand the gravity of this situation. Um, you don't get to realize that if you drop a piece of plastic in the ocean, it can last hundreds of years. And um, those are huge consequences that a lot of people still don't realize. 
um, to uh, infrastructure ends up there just because we don't have the right infrastructure in place to stop it um, from getting there in the first place. And that has been, the research shows, the most effective way is stopping it before it gets out there is far, far more effective than trying to find it when it's already lost at sea. And then the third is behavior change. By connecting people's behavior and, and changes in ways to change their behavior, you can actually systematically get people to make massive, massive shifts in the way we do things in our lives. And one of the big things in behavior change that's really obvious is when you connect something to value, people are going to take care with that. So a piece of trash is a piece of trash because it's not worth something. But if that piece of trash was in fact worth something, then you would actually call it whatever it was valued as. And so if we got people starting to perceive trash with value, they would take care with it and, and likely not, not um, discard it as often as they typically would. And so based on those ideas, we came up with this idea in general to um, what if we set up a supply chain that could make products, really positive products that could be educational tools that could fund the infrastructure we needed to then uh, create the behavior change by generating value out of waste materials, by collecting it back at the source and transforming it into something of high value and that's positive. And what I feel like our light bulb moment was, was when we got stuck to thinking, well, what could that product be? And I was actually at a music festival in Chile and I was just happened to be wandering around and I came across the skate park of the music festival. And it just so happened that David was surfing in Indonesia and he hurt his leg and he was in a little hut in the middle of nowhere doing nothing all day, waiting for his leg to recover. And it just clicked in my head, what if we made a skateboard deck? And he instantly, with his finance background, just started running the numbers and he just said, yep, I think it could work. And then with Kevin, from his uh, engineering design background, was the one to give us the idea of saying, it needs to be a consistent source of material, and that's when we dug into fishing nets. So we looked up to other successful companies that were making, you know, producing responsibly made products, and a big one for us was Patagonia, who now has amazingly become our partner. And um, big value from Patagonia has as being a responsible business is it's not about making something low cost and cheap that can you can sell a lot of. It's about something that you do that's high quality, long lasting, and has the best performance possible, while also having as much environmental benefits and, and societal benefits as, as you can possibly achieve. And, um, and in that way, you can actually have your business operate um, for good. And, and the way people try to make money, you could actually be making a positive impact on the environment and people. When we started that design process, that was a big, big piece for us that we wanted to make sure it was clear. We wanted to make it good, not just something that was recycled in a gimmick, but something that was actually also a really good product too. For their skateboards, we were actually getting a lot more traction with the fishing communities. And we had an opportunity to get a lot more fishing nets than we needed just to make our skateboards. And so we actually had a moment about four or five years ago where we thought about the company and we we decided this isn't really about how many skateboards we can sell. That's not what got us excited to start this out. It's how many communities and how many fishing nets we can, we can recycle and, and the impacts we can make in, in the coastal environment. And so at that same point when we realized that was when we started getting approached by more and more of these larger brands and saying, could we utilize our, your material uh, in our product lines? And so now what it's become is, not such, uh, not so much our own trade, trademark and branded products as it is having our own trademark and branded material. And so what that allows us to do is we have our own material now that's called Net Plus. And now all these big brands like Patagonia and Carver and Costa and Jenga, they are all now going to carry and put their big marketing dollars behind our brand of material and make it much, much bigger than we could ever have done on our own. Ultimately, our goal is to um, actually create a material that creates more positive impact than negative. So it's actually a material that's regenerating um, environments and communities. 
than taking away from it. Because right now you have got no choice but to rely on energy that comes from fossil fuels. And those make big impacts, whether you like it or not. It's still much less than, than virgin plastics, but um, it's still something we'd love to improve on and with more time. Yeah, we have a lot more in the works. You're, you're going to be excited to see what's, what's coming next, but I can't unfortunately say much about it yet. A lot of people that like to talk a big game, but it's not until you can actually show that you've delivered something, it, it really makes a big difference.